For our climactic Las Vegas sequence, we had unprecedented access to the Las Vegas Strip. Shutting down one of the busiest cities was no easy feat. Here's an inside look at what we did. As unkind of born like as Las Vegas might seem, it is actually kind of the perfect place to have the whole thing culminate. All right, set, background, set. and action. It is a glitzy, flashy city, but we are taking a very real eye towards what the city looks like and how it works. I think that makes it more exciting to people because we're in the real place and it really brings that realism to the scenes and the landscapes that we're seeing in the background. And it's also a great place for Jason Bourne because it's got the sort of front of house and back of house. Bourne is moving between parts of the world that are familiar to people and the back of house that isn't so familiar. That you get in Vegas for sure. You want me to take a left one second? Like yeah. Okay. You know, I've shot here before, obviously Ocean's Eleven, that was a big production, and I'm behind the candelabra, we worked here. But this is definitely on another level. have producers like Frank Marshall and Greg Goodman, uh, anything is possible. So we put something down a page, we crossed our fingers, and we got it. From a production standpoint, it's all in the planning. It's the only way to get this kind of result. We've been planning this for a long, long, long time. Special effects, vehicles at high speed, complicated stunt work against a clock, night after night after night after night. For the last week, we've been shooting 24-7. The first unit starts at 7 in the morning, finishes at 7 p.m., the second unit 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., and then the first unit takes over again. So it's been an amazing dance that we've been doing here. Greg Goodman got permission for us to take over Las Vegas and gave us the astonishing sort of free range that we had. I came in to Las Vegas with a very clear sort of request, hotel operators and the casino operators, about what it was we were trying to do. And luckily, we got a good response. Big shout out to the Aria Casino, who are fantastic. When you have an opportunity like this, the answer is always, yes, let's figure out how to do it. He said, it might be a little extensive when we get here. It was definitely lots and lots and lots and lots of legwork. But it started with we want everything. We always have to remember we still have a business to run and we have 10,000 guests that are in this building at any given time so we can't just say okay we're gonna film today everybody leave. They'd roll with the punches we'd come in one day and say oh actually we need to be on the other side of the casino doing something else and they go okay well we can't do it right now but in three hours we can do it. We didn't just use the casino and we didn't just use the front uh, port de cachere we used the convention center, the rafters, the loading docks. We were in the villa, the back of the house. We're going to do Sky Suites tonight, actually. I don't know that we were the part of Aria that we didn't film. Sounds good. See Mark. See Mark. Action. They've really bent over backwards, being flexible and adaptable to what we need, and it's really paying off. We shot in the casino the other day, and there was Matt Damon, and he was just folding into the background like Jason Bourne does and hiding in plain sight. It's even better when I can put a hat on. I think there's something about being 5'10", 5'11". You know, Ben Affleck, you, you know, who I grew up with, he's like 6'4", and he just sticks out no matter what. But I've always had a much easier time melting into a crowd. Yeah, I saw him, he hasn't seen me. But when you come, you guys have got to keep coming and accelerate down that corner. I'm getting a gun in a porn movie. Everything that happens in Vegas in the casinos is off the chain. It's crazy what they're shooting right now. We did a scene the other day with 1,600 extras, which is more than I've ever worked with on any movie. This is the biggest crowd scene I've ever done. Uh, the hotel blocked out a large portion of their convention space for us. This is exactly where a convention like this would happen. The consumer electronics show is taking place in the hotel we were filming in. So we were actually able to go and check out a real life technology conference just before portraying you know, a technology conference. Our design department did an excellent job creating an image and a reality that is very, very believable. I did research at DEF CON and Black Hat last August in Las Vegas, and they're a little more subdued. A lot of the vendors that are here were there, but we've also gone after more high-tech vendors, so it gets a little more gadgetry. 
the level of detail and realism that all the departments have kind of put into it is incredible. We have, I believe, 40 real vendors. They brought their own graphics and signage. The faux vendors, we created the graphics for those. But most of it, 99% of it's real. The real vendors, the real people, the real product. We always want the movies to feel like they're in the real world. Or, you know, it's like you create this born world and you want it to feel seamless. So the, the way to do a convention is to actually do the convention. Just to do a test gun fire so you all hear what it's going to sound like. Nothing comes out the barrel. Solid plug. Say again? Solid, solid plug round. Oh, solid plug. Okay, that's what solid plug round. <laughs> it's also got less gunpowder than a real bullet, so it's not going to be as loud. So here's two shots. But it's enough that the slide goes back and it ejects the shells. So that's what I'll fire. I'm going to fire about 14 of them running. All of our friends over there are all stunned people, and we'll all bump into each other, and it's going to be a hot mess. So <laughs> there you have it. There is a believable style to it, like if it was uh, stolen images from reality. sitting down to watch a Bourne movie, you're gonna get some of the most innovative action imaginable. To bring it all to life, we've got a great team of stunt trainers and performers who work exceptionally hard to make sure the final product looks incredible. Here's an inside look at how we did it. Where's the right place to finish this story? That was the question. It's kind of a historic moment outside on the Las Vegas Strip. What we're doing on the Strip is a completely different animal. Shooting what really is the biggest set piece that we've ever done in any of the movies right there on the Strip. Four cameras, please. Rolling. Here we go, team. And background action. Three, two, one. Vehicles on the way. heard the rumor that they wanted to do a car chase here. There's never been a car chase in Vegas, you know. Never. I mean, it's just incredible. And that is not a CGI chase. That is us on the strip, hundreds of cars at vastly high speed. We're very excited to have Simon Crane with us on this one, directing the second unit. He's a master of uh, these kind of action sequences. Can we just bring the edge arm round just to get a quick light, because this is the configuration. Yes. Okay. It's completely amazing what they've let us do. To close the strip for a half a mile section, to race cars down the street at 60, 70 miles an hour. It was like mind boggling, you know, you go out there midnight and as far as you can see on both sides of the road the entire strip with hundreds of our vehicles and stunt drivers. I can't even wrap my brain around the scale of what we're doing. We have 150 extras with cars, 50 stunt people with cars. We're gradually going through the cars because we're crashing a lot of them. Last night, in fact, I was shocked to see how many police we had out on the road. But you need them. It's got to be very, very secure. We're doing high-speed vehicle work up and down the strip. We have a wrong-way chase against oncoming traffic. It takes a lot of people and a lot of choreography to pull that off. We do a lot of testing and rehearsal. So then when we take it, say, onto the strip, we know where things are going to end up, and it's safe for everyone. We're trying remote cars, we're trying cannon cars. So it's back to the drawing board a bit. We're adding modifications to the various vehicles. I sort of wanted to show the weight and invincibility of the SWAT vehicle, so we actually had a limousine that we fired into it on a cannon. It totally squished the whole limousine. 
the real swap vehicles weigh like five ton, but for us it wouldn't work because it'd take too long to get up to speed. So we built one from the ground up that it's still strong, but gets to our sort of desired speed a hell of a lot quicker. We had to make it realistic enough that if it was gonna run through cars or whatever, that it had enough weight to get through like it really was a real SWAT truck. One of the biggest stunts, we have to swap vehicle drives through probably 10 cars. But also at the same time, Bourne is on a parallel trajectory and he's got to miss those cars as they're flying off towards him. All right, stand by please. It's the Las Vegas Strip. It's supposed to be sort of eight o'clock at night. It's busy, so there's so many sets of traffic lights down there. At some point, you would come up against traffic. So rather than go up the pavement, the idea was just to go straight through the cars. The cars do get flung up in the air quite a bit. Just be aware there could be bits that come off. This is really going to be a nerve-wracking shot for me. We have the cameras being triggered by the car. And then we have a truck plowing all the cars. It's going to be quite unique. Did you see that? That was nice. Everyone's safe, everyone's safe, all good, everyone's safe. Play back. That was fun. We all lived very close to set, and I lived on the, I don't know, 60th something floor, and I got to look down in the evenings when I wasn't working and to see some of the extraordinary action scenes that went on down there. I felt like I was front row watching it. We're just setting up for the finale, where Bourne will make one last ditch effort, and he literally jumps on top of the swap vehicle. Probably the trickiest thing we're doing here at the speeds they're doing, they're covering like 72 foot a second. So getting them in the right place at the same time is like I've got probably a thousandth of a second. That's the difference between being in the right place and the wrong place. It's meant to catch on the hood and put some cabling on the top. Well, the car has some hooks underneath. So as it jumps, hopefully it's like an aircraft carrier. I'm sure cars have jumped onto other things before. I know a couple of films that have done it where they've actually used rigs to do it, or special effects, or visual effects. Again, we're doing it for real. We've tested it into boxes. We're gambling, but we've done all our homework, and uh, we'll see how it goes. We come through the doors over there. Our SWAT truck starts outside, our charger's trapped on top. As it drives forward, the cable will pull it off the top through our awning. Fortunately enough, this place is getting torn down pretty soon. The Riviera is now closed. That place means a lot to a lot of people. And the fact that we're doing anything with it before it's gone is very special. SWAT truck then drives through these doors here, down these steps to hitting the first three sections of banks of the machines, and that will be our cut. There was nothing inside, so all the stuff inside now is all ours. Well, it's lucky because we're going to smash it all. We have not dressed the whole casino because we don't need to. We've given him what he needs to see. We've asked all of our background, Jordan and Fletch, to give those guys a big semicircle around the outside of that. Our stunt performers will be on the inside here. There's 250 extras, there's 60 stunt people, and uh, it's going to be good. Three, two, one. of a film set. These car crashes outside Bellagio and Paris is just amazing. 
this is totally insane. It's an army of people to make it all work. Okay, cut, got that? Cut, got that one. Jolly good.